Hey guys, so this is day two of graphing. I actually am going to divide this also into two parts. One is right now what we're going to do is sketch the graph based on what we can observe is happening. And hopefully we make the right guess. And I'm going to show you some patterns. But the other video that's going to be on Canvas is going to be what we call a sine ray. And that's going to be the more exact version. If you know you're going into 1050 or calculus, the sine ray is definitely the way to go. But you can always do this sketching just as I'm going to do it right now, for now, and then compare it to the sine ray. But the sine ray helps us in other situations, not just with rational functions. So if we look, our first problem example here, we reduced it down to x minus 1 over x minus 3 times x plus 2, okay? So if we were to observe what's going on here and then um, kind of guess what the graph would look like, the first thing I would do is start with the middle, okay? Now, we learned earlier in the year when it came to x-intercepts that they were even or odd. And if you remember, odd ones cross, even ones touch. And we knew that based on whether the x-intercept was to the first, second, third, so on and so on. That's what made it even or odd. So of course, as you can see, x minus one is to the first. There's no exponent, there's no parentheses, an exponent with it, it's just to the first. So that means it crosses. So I know right here that we have, it could go either way, right? But of course, I see it going decreasing because this y-intercept here, it has to cross this y-intercept. So if I kept going, okay, if I kept going, this is going to go up and this one's going to go down. How do I know that? Well, because if this one went down, we would have another x-intercept, but we only have one, okay? So I know this one goes up. And these asymptotes here means that it gets really, really close. So it's going to keep going up. And this one, again, it wouldn't come back up because one is not touching, nor is there another x-intercept here. So I can assume that it's going down. I think it's really, really close to that intercept there. I think it's touchy. Now, I had mentioned last class horizontal asymptotes. We always think about like, oh, an asymptote, it can't cross. But with horizontal, it doesn't matter about the middle. It matters what happens on the end. So it can definitely cross this horizontal asymptote right here. It can't cross at the end. It means it follows it. Okay. Now, again, is it up here or is it down here? Is it up here? Is it down here? How do I know? That's even or odd of your vertical asymptotes, okay? More than likely, just in this section, we're gonna deal with odd asymptotes or odd vertical asymptotes, not even. Odd means, so I'll make a little note so you guys can see what I'm saying. Odd vertical asymptotes means that they go opposite. Now here, this is only one way I can see this. I can see this side going down and this side going up. But odd means they're going in opposite directions. Where even asymptotes go in the same direction. So both up or I can make another one, both down. Again, how do I know they're even or odd? Well, your vertical asymptotes come from your denominator here. And as you can see, they're both to the first. They're both odd. So that means they're opposite. So if this one's going up, that means this one must be going down. And then again, our horizontal asymptote says that towards the end here, I get really close, but I do not touch. If this one's going down, the other side must be going up because it's odd. And again, I hug those asymptotes. 
in the next video, I'll show you how to use SignRay to help us identify if we're right or not. Even though I know we're right. All right, let's go on to the next one. All right, what do you observe that might happen here? What do you think is going to happen at this spot? Well, if you see here, we have to connect all of these. You see that? We have to connect them. So that makes me start going if we're going down, or do we come back up? Well, that's based on if we're touching or crossing, right? So crossing would come down here. Touching would make it bounce back up. So let's look at our x-intercepts, which come from the numerator. Again, they're to the first, so they must be odd and that must be crossing. So it's going to cross. Right now, on the other side here, what happens? Well, the vertical asymptotes are also odd. So remember, that means they go in opposite directions. So if this is down, this must be up. And again, I'm going to hug those asymptotes. I'm not going to cross over over here because horizontal at the end means that it gets closer to it. If this one's down, this one must be up. Hug those asymptotes. We're done. Okay, remember that we weren't doing this because it was oblique. I showed you a picture of it last class. Let's do our final one over here. Okay, now this hole, remember it's going to get close right here which means I can assume that, hey, we get close to this horizontal asymptote, we don't cross over. There's no middle for it to cross over. I also know that I'm going to connect with this y-intercept. Now, how do I know it doesn't go down? How do I know it doesn't go down? Because there's no x-intercept, right? If there was an x-intercept, it would come down here. But there's no x-intercept, so our only assumption is it goes up here. Okay, now if we look over here, this is to the first, which makes it an odd vertical asymptote, which means it goes in opposite directions. If this side goes up, this side must be going down, and we hug those asymptotes. Very good. All right, you guys give it a try.